A professor at Harvard is out with a new book detailing an incident that he believes is the first sign of intelligent life outside Earth. Astronomer Avi Loeb joins us now to share more. Professor, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right, so tell us what was seen and when. In 2017, uh, the very first object that came from outside the solar system was spotted near Earth. And uh, uh, at first, people thought, well, it must be a rock, just like the asteroids or comets that we have seen before uh, within the solar system. Maybe it was ejected from another planetary system similar to ours. Mm -hmm. But uh, as they got more data on it, it looked very weird. Uh, it was... Uh, much longer than it was wide. Uh, it ex exhibited a special push away from the sun, even though it didn't have any cometary tail to push it. Uh, and so it didn't look like a comet, but yet it behaved like uh, someone that has an extra push. And, and the one explanation that I could think of is that it's being pushed by sunlight. It reflects sunlight off its surface. Mm -hmm. And for that to be effective, it needs to be extremely thin. So it might be a sail of the type that you find on a sailboat, except it's being pushed by light bouncing off it. Uh, and we are currently developing this technology for space exploration. It's called light sails. Hmm. Um, and so that was a suggestion that it might be artificial in origin. All right, so we have the simulation of what it looked like on the screen so people can see. Uh, we, we have a lot of space junk floating out there, right, from our own space program, as you mentioned, rocks. What about this makes you believe it's from a distant alien civilization? Because its properties do not resemble any object we have seen before hmm. from within the solar system. And so it's the first one that we find from outside, and it looks weird. Uh, and uh, it's possible that uh, there is a lot of space junk out there or that it's a probe. We don't know because we didn't collect enough data, enough evidence, and I'm just alerting everyone to look for objects like that hmm. so that next time there is one coming by, we will examine it more carefully. For example, if we catch it on its approach to us, then we can send a spacecraft that will take a photograph of it, hmm. and then we can learn more about it. Interesting. So it's, its shape and quality sort of remind you of a probe of some sort. What is the name of your book, by the way, and what else do you want people to know about the book? So the book's name is um, uh, Extraterrestrial, and uh, it has two messages. One, that uh, there was this object that looks extremely weird and uh, could be of artificial origin, and we should put that possibility on the table and the search for messages in a bottle, not just for radio signals from space as evidence for other civilizations. You know, by now we know that half of the sun-like stars have a planet of the size of the Earth roughly at the same distance from the star. So they can have liquid water on the surface and the chemistry of life. And uh, that means that if you roll the dice billions of times in the Milky Way galaxy, we're probably not alone. Mm. And moreover, we're probably not the sharpest cookie in the jar, yeah. <laughs> not the, the smartest kid on the block. And so we should be open-minded and search for evidence rather than assume that everything we see on the sky must be rocks. And that's my one message. The second message is that this is not a popular idea within the scientific community right now. And uh, it's, I think, a problem of the scientific culture where mm. uh, scientists have a problem discussing the possibility of extraterrestrial intelligence. They, it's out of the mainstream, and it should not be, because if you arrange for the same conditions we have here on Earth in billions of other planets, why wouldn't you get the same outcome? Mm. It's the most conservative thing to assume. And it shouldn't be considered speculative. Speaking and at the, same at, at the same time, you know, the scientific community has speculative ideas about extra dimensions, about super strings, mm -hmm. about uh, uh, supersymmetry, all kinds of things, the, the multiverse that people discuss as part of the mainstream, but are completely speculative with no evidence in their support. And so I find the current scientific culture to be unhealthy. It's more about intellectual gymnastics mm. where people try to prove that they are smart rather than try to understand nature 
And I'm saying, look, there is this evidence. Let's discuss it openly rather than putting a taboo on this subject and not discussing it at all. Yeah, yeah talk of alien life has been stigmatized somewhat, but within the scientific community, we should continue to ask questions, right? Astronomer and Harvard professor Avi Loeb, thank you so much for shedding some light on this. Good luck with the book. Thanks for having me.